How prejudiced are you? Do you have a mindset that when you hear a certain group of people, such as the word teenagers, you think thugs, Christians, you think religious lunatics, um, other faiths and religions, you think terrorists or, or whatever it might be. On today's episode, we're going to teach you how to overcome those prejudices and how to not compartmentalize, how to keep an open mind ultimately. So welcome to today's show. Welcome to today's episode of Going Deeper with John Morris. Join the show that tackles the topics that many around the world struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. From mental and physical health to emotional and spiritual well-being. But that's not all. John also shares his teaching on more focused topics such as anxiety, self-image, gaining employment, the importance of educating oneself, developing a deeper spiritual connection, mental and physical well-being, and so much more. Want to be the best you can be? You're in the right place. And now please welcome Mind, Body and Soul's very own John Morris. Folks, and welcome to another exciting episode of Going Deep Ram. As always, your host, John Morris, the psychologist and training artist, author, and personal development coach. Welcome to the show that helps you get from where you are to where you want to be, hopefully step by step and hopefully with simplicity as well. Always reminding you that we never teach them anything that we haven't had first-hand experience in ourselves. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Tell a friend because it could be the very thing that helps them in their hour of struggle. In today's episode, we are talking all about the dangers of compartmentalization. That's a big, big task and a big, big uh, set of words, is it not? What does it mean? It means really examining and exploring our prejudices. Recently, I was uh, studying with the University of Stanford in the United States, and one of the lectures that was given uh, by a doctor that was there was all about how easy it is to, I suppose, be, be prejudiced against different people. And uh, I'll give you a few examples here, if I may, that you know, like I did at the top of the show, a lot of people think that, you know, all Americans are really brash, cocky, rude, and, you know, full of themselves. Uh, or that, you know, all English people love tea and tea time and cakes and they're really stiff upper lip kind of people. Or that, you know, uh, certain religious groups are extremists and likely to blow buildings just for the sake of doing it. The crazy thing about this, folks, oh, and, and I should throw this, all government is uh, corrupt and terrible. Here's the thing about it. If you've got 10,000 people working in government, okay, and we're, we're going to specify with the US government because they, they get a, the, the majority of the bad press. So you've got 10,000 people working for the government and say maybe 100 of them are corrupt. You've still got 9,900 people that are standing there and coming in every single day, working their heart out, you know, and working their socks off to provide the best level of care and service that they can. Do they always get it right? No, but how many of us do? The danger is that a lot of people, and it's very easy to do when you hear a certain phrase and a certain uh, idea or an ideology, people, you know, the shutters come up. I could say to you right now, for example, Allah, and you would have a response one way or another. I could say to you, Jesus, and you would have a response one way or another. Why? Because these are two religious figures that over time you have been conditioned, probably by the media, probably by institutions, the church or the, the mosque or, or whatever it is, to have one feeling or another. Here's the bizarre thing. We actually choose our reactions. The what's called learned association. So for example, a fear of spiders is a learned association. It's actually a, an evolutionary learned association. And I'll try not to get too deep and, and too far away from it. But what that means is, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, spiders, you know, were lethal in the United Kingdom. And one bite from them would kill you pretty much like that. In our biology and in our DNA structure, those genes have been passed on to us, but the crazy thing is that the majority of spiders here in the United Kingdom, if not all spiders in the United Kingdom, they're not poisonous. They can't bite you, they certainly can't kill you, um, you know, and it, it's very, very important to be aware of that. Um, prejudices seem to be, you know, all over the, the world right now, and 
you know, it, it's a really sad thing that I think we need as a, as a race to really work on and we really need to eradicate. Because that's, you know, when people say all black people are terrible or all white people, you know, destroyed, uh, you know, so much land or all Christians, you know, ripped up the Native American land, you know, and, and forced them out. You know, that's like saying, well, all of the human race is stupid. You know, all of the human race are sadomasochists. You, you can fill in the blank. Um, the reality is that if you've got one lunatic, you know, that's going on who has a misfiring proton in their DNA structure, that doesn't make that whole race and that whole species terrible. And I've had family members that are like this, that believe that, you know, one race was better than another and, and so on and so, so on. So ultimately, what can we do about that? We can develop a self-awareness. Is it going to change overnight? No, probably not. But we can develop a self-awareness where we educate ourselves and develop within ourselves a constitution that says, I'm not going to behave like that. You know, I, I and I had this, you know, for a while I believed that all churches were terrible and all Christians were terrible because of what had been done to me. Um, you know, and, and then I got to a point I realized that I haven't experienced every church in the world. I haven't experienced every faith in the world. I haven't experienced, you know, and I think it's really important to be aware of that and to not get to a place where you, you know, become so prejudiced and so um, hate-filled and verbally attacking because what that does, that does two things. One, it means that you, as a person, start filling yourself with bitterness and anger and any time that that comes up, you find reasons then to uh, reaffirm your beliefs on why this group of people um, or this, this activity or faith or whatever it might be, you know, is, is terrible and destructive. As opposed to saying that was one incident that happened one time in one period of history. Do you see what I mean? You know, if, if someone speaks bad to you uh, and in, in a religious organization, for example, it doesn't mean the whole organization is terrible. It means that one person spoke to you negatively in a way that hurt you um, one time, one place, in one moment in history, in eternal history. And it's very important to not get to a place where you start filling yourself with that bitterness and that anger and that, you know, horror and everything else because all it does is spread. And you see that more and more now with races going to war with other races, religions going to war with other religions, uh, even the same religion, you look at Catholic and Protestant, you know, they believe in the same God and yet because of their differences in religious practice and the things that they uphold, they attack each other and brutally murder each other. And looking at it from, I suppose that you know the, the perspective and you know where I'm at now, I kind of look at it and think, how folly, how stupid. You know, we were all once one. We all travelled together, and because of a different decision that happened many, many millennia ago time passed by and human beings you know uh, started to grow prejudice against each other and then when people started to want to conquer land you know and that's that's the stupid thing land is never owned you know land is of the earth but people have made you believe that they own the land nobody owns the land that's the crazy thing so when you're in that position and i suppose that the core meaning of or the core teaching of all of this is when you're in a position to either spread love or hate, remember this, if somebody's hurt you and somebody's upset you, it was one person in one moment, one time in eternal history. That doesn't mean that person is horrible, it might mean that that person had a bad day or that they made a bad decision um, or, or that they said something to you without even fully intending to hurt you, whatever it is. Don't take that to heart and use it as a reason to spread hate. Because when you do that, all you're doing is actually negating yourself, diminishing your eternal, amazing spiritual presence. And all it does is hurt other people. It doesn't actually cause any solution to the problem. So that is why compartmentalizing can be really, really dangerous because you can think some really horrific things about some really well-meaning people. And when you do that, 
you kind of eradicate yourself and you kind of alienate yourself from amazing potentials and possibilities of what could be. Remember, live a life that is open to everything but attached to nothing. I hope that helps you today. I hope that was a little bit of you know wisdom and advice, uh, not necessarily a, I suppose a, a teaching show as such. Maybe it was. I don't know. You decide. But if you are interested in getting in touch um, and hopefully you know for, for a personal development coaching to help you get from where you are to where you want to be, please do get in touch with us. We've got a couple of spaces left available for one-on-one -on -one coaching with yours truly, um, and of course uh, for our group coaching as well. You can get in touch um, with me either on here or at thebattlesweallface.com. I would love to hear from you and see how we can help you uh, get from where you are to where you want to be. And until next time, folks, I've been your host, John Morris, always reminding you that we never teach anything that we have not first-hand experience in. And this is the show, this is the only show that helps you get from where you are to where you want to be, step-by-step, step, and hopefully with simplicity. Have a phenomenal day, my friends. Take care. God bless. Do you, your son or daughter, struggle with direction, clarity and purpose? Maybe you struggle with anxiety. Maybe you struggle with self-esteem or confidence issues. Maybe you've got great ideas, but you've no idea how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Don't worry, you're not alone. People around the world struggle with these issues. Hi there, I'm John Morris. I'm the coach to the creative mind and I'm also a psychologist in training. For the last two decades, I've worked with people from all walks of life and all over the world, all with a wide variety of issues. I've worked with people from youth groups to adult education to people dealing with day-to-day -day living issues. And each one of them has an amazing story to tell and we've helped them get clear as to where they are and clear as to where they want to be. And I want to help you too. Unlike a lot of life coaches and therapists that like to drag things on and leave you dangling on the carrot, I want to make sure that each and every single time that we meet and have a life coaching session together, that you never ever leave saying, man, that was a waste of time, or I didn't get the value that I desired. I am committed to making sure that each and every single time we meet, you are one step closer by the time we finish to a goal that you have in mind. So why should you work with me? Well, let me tell you, as I said, I'm committed to making sure that I provide value, that I provide something that's step-by-step -step and easy to follow. I'm also a fantastic listener. I've been blessed with the gift of listening, and I love to listen to people, their stories, their, their dreams, their desires, because there's nothing more energetic and passionate to me than when a client gets their first desire, or they get that goal, or they hit that big target, or whatever it might be, and also, as the trifecta, I am committed to you to helping you take action. So whether or not it be deciding on the university you want to go to, deciding on the course that you want to be at, helping you get excited and passionate about your work environment, whatever it might be, I am committed to helping that happen. I'm also committed if you need to shed some pounds, if you need to gain some muscle mass, if you need to, I don't know, develop your self-esteem, I'm committed to helping you take action and following a step-by-step plan of action that we can put together. But now folks, I want to tell you about the early bird special offer that we are launching right now. It is for 10 people and 10 people alone. That's right, if you are interested in having life coaching sessions with me one-on-one, -on -one, 10 people have the opportunity to do that and we're looking to help these people change their lives completely. We take ages 14 and upwards, so if you're interested in learning how to get from where you are to where you want to be, to really develop that passion to live a life that you enjoy as opposed to a life that you wake up and think, ah, oh, you know, how to develop and change your mindset from maybe a negative one to a positive one. Understanding what fuels your mindset and understanding what creates the kind of life that you want to live, then get in touch with me today. I would love to hear from you. As I say, this is open only for 10 people, and once it's done, it's done. So click that box below, get in touch, let's have a conversation backwards and forwards and see if we're a fit for each other. And I look forward to working with you. Have an amazing day folks take care god bless and i will see you soon